Hello everyone, John Stegall. My final research project was a paper titled The Development, Implementation, and Impact of the Continental Cavalry on the Revolutionary War. There were ample primary sources available, which really made uh, researching the paper, drafting the rough draft, and finishing the final product not very much of a challenge. The secondary sources found were all academic and they definitely supported the topic. The Continental Cavalry was typically an afterthought when it comes to the history of the American Revolution. There's ample stuff reading about the artillery, Henry Knox, and the infantry, the Minutemen, the militia, mm -hmm. the Continental Professionals that were trained by von Steuben and emerged from Valley Forge in the winter 1777-1778. George Washington, although not a cavalryman himself, was really the key proponent for establishing the cavalry arm. And he learned this in a very a nearly disastrous way at Chad's Ford in October 7, excuse me, 11 September 1777, also known as the Battle of Brandywine Creek in the Philadelphia campaign, where General Howe left New York City, came and landed and marched on Philadelphia following a European model of warfare that Typically, a nation will capitulate once its capital is captured. Continental Congress had moved out of New York City, obviously in 1776, down to Philadelphia. Uh, House movement on Philadelphia subsequently sent them to Baltimore and ultimately into New York. Now, at Brandywine, this was the first time that Washington had a substantial cavalry arm that he could utilize. This was Colonel Stephen Moylan's Pennsylvania-raised Fourth Continental Light Dragoon. He also had elements of Elijah Sheldon's Second Connecticut Continental Light Dragoon. Half of that element was sent north to fight at Saratoga to support Horatio Granny Gates and Benedict Arnold uh, to protect Albany as Gentleman John Burgoyne came down the Hudson River Valley and Colonel Barry St. Lager uh, proceeded down and east across the Mohawk River Valley. Also present were the first. Continental Light Dragoons under Colonel Bland and portions of the 3rd Continental Light Dragoon under Colonel Baylor. Now, they're technically on paper, there were four regiments. However, they were all under strength. And what Washington learned very quickly, it was that once again, as in Long Island in 1776, how utilized his cavalry and was able to outmaneuver and turn Washington's flank. At Long Island, it was his left flank. This time at Brandywine, it was his right flank. Washington had scattered his cavalry. He did not have a designated cavalry corps commander, so there was no unified cavalry chain of command. And instead of massing them and concentrating them where their shock mobility, maneuver, and firepower could be best utilized, he spread them out amongst his general officers, basically to be used as errand boys. He also failed tremendously to use them in an intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance, or ISR role, and guard the various fords that went across Brandywine, thus enabling him to be outflanked and having to retreat and surrender, surrender the field to General Howe. One bright moment out of this, however, was Casimir Pulaski, the Polish-European volunteer, who led a brisk cavalry charge along with Moylan's 4th, uh, conducting a very successful rear guard that prevented Washington himself from actually being captured. Now, as Washington pondered this inside Valley Forge in 1777, he went directly to the camp committee in 1778 with a 21 page letter that opened with the enlistment problem the Continental Army had with expiring enlistments, they were too short, the pay problem, and also the problem about pensions for his officer corps. Now, when it came to discussing professionalizing the Army, increasing the size, and the combat ability of the Continental Army. The first branch, and he addressed all the branches. He addressed the infantry, he addressed the artillery, the engineers, the quartermaster corps, but the first branch he addressed in in-depth and the longest writing in this, in this camp committee letter of 29 January 1778 was in regards to the Continental Cavalry. And Washington's actions in that letter inspired the Continental Congress to actually grow and adequately man, train, and equip the Continental Cavalry. And by the time the, the war ended, you know, 
actually all the way up until 1783, there were Continental Cavalry operations going on in the Southern colonies. The, the Continental Cavalry had indeed become a formidable uh, maneuver strike element and also had really uh, championed, embraced, and adapted the ISR role of cavalry. Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed this.